I typically look forward to doing these, but I did not want to do this video today. I did not want to do this. I'm doing it because I love you. What's up y'all? I'm Rachel Elizabeth and you're watching Real Talk with Rach where I share things honestly because it's real talk, honesty, vulnerability that gets us deeper in relationship with each other and deeper in intimacy with God. Just yesterday, I realized that it has been now two weeks since the last time I posted anything on my Instagram profile and that's really out of character for me. So I was thinking about it, wondering why that was and I realized it's because it's been a really, really difficult couple of weeks for me. And I've gone through hard things before and been able to share, but I'm typically able to be strong through my hard thing and share something encouraging or a lesson that I've learned already through it with you. But these last two weeks, I haven't posted anything because I haven't had answers. I haven't had answers and I feel like I haven't learned any lessons that I can share with you yet. And for someone whose career has been very dependent on social media in the past, it's really difficult for me to wrap my head around the idea that I don't have anything to share. Not only that, but it gets really annoying taking pictures of yourself to share with the world. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of over selfies right now. But as I was contemplating this, I realized that I didn't share, not just because I didn't have a lesson or encouraging words for you, but I haven't shared because I've felt incredibly weak. I was believing this lie that I don't have anything worth sharing if I can't be strong through it. I was believing this lie that my value is dependent on me being strong through a certain situation, but that's not true because weakness is simply a part of life. The strongest people on the planet have weak moments. I'm not talking about way back before they started their career and now they're super strong all the time. I'm talking about on a day-to-day -day basis. We are all human, y'all, and weakness has nothing to do with your value. Weakness does not define you. Throughout our lives, we're always, even in a moment-to-moment -moment basis sometimes, gonna go through this roller coaster of highs and lows, of strong moments and weak moments. But the reason why I didn't wanna do this video today is because honestly, I'm still in that place. The only reason I'm able to do this video for you today is because God gave me a little bit more of an answer as to why I'm going through what I'm going through. And before I share that with you, I'm gonna share my process because I hope and I believe that that will be helpful to some of you too. I've had a lot of hard times where I can name exactly why it's a hard time. There's something to grieve or there's something lost or I made a mistake and I am facing the consequences or there's some other reason that I can pinpoint and tell you exactly why I'm going through that hard time. But this, the past couple of weeks, I feel like I'm living in the middle of a question mark. I feel purposeless, I feel directionless, and I feel very useless in a lot of ways. Now, I know that those things are not true, but they're honest, real feelings that I've been dealing with. And I'm pointing that out just as a side note to help you remember that your feelings, while they are valid, they do not define who you are. Who you are is a son or daughter of God with enough value for God to send his son to die for you. Jesus paid dearly for you because you are worth dying for. So that said, those feelings are natural human feelings. So if we're going through something and we can acknowledge what we're feeling, but also acknowledge that those feelings don't tell the truth about who we are, then we can move forward in processing those emotions. So in the midst of all these feelings, I've been processing them with God, and yet he encourages me to keep my eyes fixed on him and to be still and to praise him through it, but he hasn't given me any answers. So I've had to press through and wonder and struggle and wrestle with these emotions. And when you are wrestling with emotions like these, like feeling purposeless and directionless and valueless and useless, for any length of time, it begins to do something to your faith. And you have a choice in these moments. You can choose to believe your doubts or you can choose to believe the truth 
of what God says, that his word is infallible, that his promises are sure, that he can be trusted, that he is good, and that he loves you. If you choose to lean into the promises, even if what you're going through doesn't make any sense right now, then you can let go and give God your questions. And you can remember that he who promised is faithful. And if you haven't seen the promise fulfilled yet, if you haven't seen the breakthrough yet, if you're still going through these emotions, if you're still wrestling for another day, remember how he sustained you every day up until this point. Remember how he's been faithful all the way up until now and that he's unchangeable. And then when you still struggle with the questions like I have been, and it feels impossible to get through until the promise arrives, then remember what God said in Matthew chapter 6. He said, why worry about tomorrow? Tomorrow has enough trouble of its own. God promises to give us new mercies every morning, enough grace for today, enough strength for today, and he promises to provide for today. So all we really need to do is trust him for one day, for the day that we are currently experiencing, to stay present and to stay focused on him and keep reminding yourself of who he is and give yourself permission to be weak because when you are weak, he is strong. When you are weak and acknowledge it, you allow him to get all the glory and all the credit for getting you through another day. When you admit that you can't do it without him, he gets to show himself powerful, merciful, gracious, strong, capable in your life. And so my process was this. If I can't answer my own questions, and if I literally can't see how to get myself out of this, and I know that I'm not supposed to get myself out of this, but that God's gonna get me out of this, then I simply need to remember who God is, that he will never leave, he will never forget about me, that he is faithful. And when another day seems daunting, when another moment seems daunting. Remember that he's always been faithful to get us through one day at a time, and he can get us through another day at a time. He can get us through another hour. He can get us through another minute. He can get us through another 30 seconds. So when I remember that God never makes a promise that he will not keep, and that he promises to get me through today, then I can rest and focus on him. And even when that feels like too much, I remember one more thing, and that is that whatever I'm going through is either for my good or it's for you and for your good. And that was the revelation God gave me this morning. If what I'm going through is not punishment, and it can't be because that's not who God is, and it's not a consequence from something I did out of the will of God because I believe that I am walking in step with God, being obedient as I know how, and there's grace that covers everything anyway, then it has to be for you. And I remembered my friend Jenna, who recently embarked on a similar journey to the one that I'm on. I remember her saying that I need to keep going because it encourages her and helps her keep going. And when she said that, my strength was renewed because the who had a face. I can keep doing this one more day if it's helping Jenna, if it's helping anyone else. I can keep doing this. So in a way, she is my why. And then I went to Bethel this last weekend. I drove up to Redding, California and visited my friend Jared and his lovely lady, Betty. And I got to stay with Betty all weekend. And she shared with me the exact same thing, but on the opposite side. She shared with me that she had just finished a season of life where all she was asking God was why. And then she shared with me that what I'm going through currently is exactly what she was going through. That I am the answer to her why questions that she had for so long. And she got an answer that she had been asking for for months because I am currently going through something similar to what she had gone through. And she, because of this beautiful system that God has put in place, was then able to encourage me. And so this morning when I was wrestling with all my questions and all my whys, I remembered Jenna and I remembered Betty and I remembered you. And I remembered 2 Corinthians chapter 1, starting in verse 3. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. 
If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. So it's clear right there in scripture, in the good book, in the truth of the word of God, that what we go through, especially when it doesn't make sense, is for those coming behind us. And yeah, we're gonna go through suffering because we're following the suffering savior. We're following in his footsteps. We are giving our lives over to him to live through us. So if he exemplified suffering, then we're gonna go through it. He promised us, it's not one of the promises you hear often, but he promised us that in this world, we will have trouble or we will suffer, but he tells us to take heart. He says, take heart, I have overcome the world, which means we have overcome the world. So whatever we're going through is being used for good, is being used for his glory. And I don't know about you, but that is incredibly encouraging. <laughs> but if not, I wanna share one more thing, and that's Psalm 18, verse 28 and 29. You, O Lord, Keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. And then, of course, the verse we all know in Philippians, it says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But before just leaving you with that, I want to share something else that is attached to that verse and I share it in context. Paul says, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstance. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in every and any situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. So I want you to think about the context of that verse. Think about that spectrum that Paul is talking about. Whenever you're going through that roller coaster of feelings, whether you're feeling weak and helpless or whether you're feeling on top of the world and confident, know that it is possible to be content and that's what we're called to. But whatever the circumstance, it's Jesus that gives us the strength to do anything and everything. And I know that even sharing this with you, even though I really did not want to make a video today, I'm doing it because of you. And I am encouraged simply by encouraging you in this. And I thank God for that because he very often uses the words he is speaking through me to minister to me at the same time. He's just good like that. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey. Thank you so much to my Patreon family. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it with a friend. If you'd like to support this ministry in any way, there are links in the description box below. I love you and I'm praying for you and I'll see you next time. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, I want you to tell me what your favorite book or series of books is. Leave it in the comments below and I'll see you next time.